the invitation to party down with Vladimir Putin was never going to be one of the hottest tickets of the summer anyway. If football's next blood-flecked jamboree has to go ahead without Prince William without a few political hangers on and the standard foreign office freeloaders. No doubt they will live. The bigger question is why they were going in the first place. Why was anyone beyond the England team and their FA minders? who have to be there making plans to make nice with a country that remains the standard bearer for rogue nations in the world of sport and beyond. Do they not remember Sochi 2014 and its aftermath? The week after flexing Russia's physical muscle at a Winter Olympics we now know was utterly corrupted by a state-sponsored doping program. Putin's army stepped into Ukraine. Sochi was a show of strength for the cameras and the watching world. Events in Crimea The reality show Fools or those whose only motivation is money think giant sporting festivals in totalitarian states open them to the world. The truth is they endorse and strengthen their dictatorships and brutal regimes. It happened in Beijing in 2008. It will happen in Qatar in 2022. Russia is merely the next stop on this grand tour of corruption criminality and, inevitably, death. FIFA wish to be in partnership with Putin and we should expect nothing less from those creeps. But we do not have to follow quite how a partial boycott of Russia's World Cup will cut across the FA's plan to crawl back up the fundament of some pretty despicable individuals and organizations. Because they think there may be a World Cup in it down the line remains to be seen. But if it needs the government to advise them to focus on home affairs for a while, so be it. It will take many decades to sweep FIFA's stables. And if you want to know the state of the place right now, there's a handy clip of film to watch. 100 Keepy Uppies 32 Legends was released on Tuesday to mark 100 days to the World Cup's first game in Moscow. A clock counts 100 as players from the 32 qualified countries including Wayne Rooney. Juggle and balance the ball. The sequence climaxes with an exchange of passes between Putin and FIFA President Gianni Infantino. Inside the Kremlin heavily edited to make Putin appear better than he is. See how sport is used to burnish these reputations? See how any hint of endorsement is manipulated to promote respectability? Look at old Vladimir. There, having a kick about with his mates, just like one of us, poisoning British citizens on the streets of Salisbury, has just one of the lads. Messing about, it is incredible that it has taken what appears to be state-sponsored attempted murder to remind the foreign. Secretary that Russia really WASNT the go-to destination this summer. How many hacks did they have to commit? How many invasions? How many attempts at electoral corruption? Boris Johnson at the dispatch box on Tuesday was like Alan Partridge discussing Hitler. The more I learn about Hitler, says Partridge, the more I dislike him. And there was something of that in Johnson. Saying that now Russia had taken to infecting the good folk of Salisbury, he definitely wouldn't be eating any of their prawn sandwiches in Nizhny Novgorod. No matter how much they begged, although, of course, as Johnson is the Mike Bassett, England manager of foreign secretaries. He didn't actually say that. He said something else and then his underlings had to ring round with an explanation that this more sensible version of foreign diplomacy was what he really meant to say. So this is what he said, if things turn out to be as many members suspect that they are it will be very difficult to see how. Thinking ahead to the World Cup this July, this summer, UK representation at that event could go ahead in the normal way. We will certainly have to consider that, and this is what he meant to say, exactly that but with representation meaning diplomatic and dignitary presence. Not the actual football team because I've just been informed that to pull the team out would be a vote-losing disaster on a scale not seen since. Well, the performance of the Prime Minister at the last general election. Johnson is the type of speaker whose every utterance should come with a seven-second delay of the type that is used to stop foul language being broadcast on live television but, even by his standards, this was idiotic. So this is the government's plan for retaliation? Thayer going to football Russia into submission at the third Russian-British business forum last November it was said there was approaching £9 billion in trade between the countries in 2017. Predicted to double in the next five years. No mention of that taking a hit in Johnson's grandstanding comments. When governments talk boycotts, invariably, they leave the money men out of it. Maybe Johnson simply did fail to make himself clear surprising how often that happens for such an erudite man or maybe 
He went down the standard government path of expecting higher standards for sport than industry, was warned of the consequences, and hastily reshot his argument. For there is a reason Johnson's talk of representation was taken to mean the team. Nobody cares who else is there anyway. The behind-the-scenes politicking, the FA glad-handing, the diplomats improving relations. The business delegates exploiting trade opportunities it passes the rest of us by. Thigh are just the people taking up all the best tickets and the seats at the front of the plane. Go, Don, go see if we care. Just don't pretend that now Russian skullduggery has come to Salisbury. We have to share the shock of the foreign secretary. A Whitehall briefing said discussions were taking place around officially advising fans not to travel to the World Cup. But fans are not fools. It is loyalty that motivates them to go, not dumb acceptance, even those traveling to Moscow. Those who have attended European fixtures with English clubs or England supporters who came across Putin's hybrid war in the shape of Russian hooligans in France in 2016 will have known Russia should have been a pariah nation for years. Russia has corrupted modern sport in a systemic manner that is close to unparalleled. The conspiracy that tainted Sochi and, before it, London 2012, goes right to the top of government. It is a disgrace that the country has been welcomed back by the Olympic movement. A disgrace that FIFA's new regime never considered separating Putin from his showpiece World Cup. A disgrace that sporting bodies around the world continue delivering major competitions for Russia to host. It should not have taken a poisoning in Wiltshire for the Foreign Office to realize Russia was not the place for British citizens this summer. We all know how the country works. Do not further insult our intelligence with mugging and sound bites from the dispatch box.